Well, first thing that comes up when you search for Raspberry Pi Next OS on Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever is this page. And I must admit, I am not much of a fan. <laughs> It is like every other piece of documentation maintained in any other wiki, but Arch's information that was relevant in 1982 and kind of a mess. It, it however, you know, does talk about, you know, pre-built images for Raspberry Pi that run NixOS. And that's, that's pretty attractive because it, you know, works the way that other distributions do like Raspberry Pi OS and Ubuntu and whatever. But if you think about it, we use Nix. The whole point of Nix is repeatable builds. We don't need an image. We, we can build our own. We can rebuild him. If only to avoid needing to read that train wreck of a wiki page. <laughs> uh, I'll be using a Nix OS system to build my Raspberry Pi image. I don't think it's strictly necessary. Um, a little... I, I didn't have time to, to find out for sure, but it's reportedly possible to use Nix running on like Ubuntu or even Mac OS to build a suitable Raspberry Pi image. I need to wait until part two of this series to try it. I'll be cross compiling uh, the image of all the, all the packages that will be in the image to ARM on a x86-64 system. I was initially kind of worried about this because in the past, my experience with cross compilation have always been massive pain. Uh, but it's turns out to be a bit of a non issue with Nix. You just kind of set a couple flags and Nix magically makes it work. It, it happened. It's, it's, it's kind of amazing. Even if I, I wanted to use a, a, an arm system to compile as the, as sort of the build host, I don't, I don't have any powerful enough arm devices available. Um, all the all the Pi devices I have would totally struggle. Uh, for this video, I'm going to use a Pi Zero Two W as the target. Um, that machine wouldn't even be able to finish compiling the system because it only has like 512 megs of RAM. So cross compile cross compilation avoids these problems, and it's it's pretty fast. The inability of Pi devices, or at least my Pi device to finish compiling a NixOS system is also a problem for updates. So after the system is installed, I'm going to try to use a tool named DeployRS to cross compile updates on our host system and then deploy those updates to the running Raspberry Pi without needing to rebuild an image. And I'm talking about all this compiling stuff. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm mentioning the word compile, usually on NixOS, you don't have to worry too much about it packages compiling um particularly if you're on if you're on x86 64 because all the packages that you get are pulled down from the the cache at cachenixos.org but for alternate platforms uh it's it's a bit it's a bit of a it's a bit of a guess whether it'll be in the cache or not so you'll, you'll end up compiling a lot of stuff that you wouldn't on x86 a little bit of uh history i guess i don't whatever uh there are three main variants of of arm platforms that raspberry pi has put out products based on uh there's arch 64 there's arm 7l arm v7l and there's arm v6l and these are in order from newest to oldest so arch 64 is the latest greatest uh it it is what the pi 3 and 4 Five, three, four, and five are based on. Uh, it's also what the Pi Zero Two and Two W are based on. It's sixty-four bit, and it is supported by NixOS currently very well. Um, that being said, the wiki claims that Cache NixOS Org, like I was saying, the binary cache for for packages, has most uh, stuff for AR sixty-four in it. But I found this to be false, and lots of compiling must be done. ARM v seven L. Is basically the Pi 2. It's 32 bit. And I tried to compile stuff against it. I couldn't make Nix, Nix OS unstable, or sorry, Nix packages unstable, uh, get through a compilation routine, but I, it 
seem to be well on its way to finishing a compilation routine under Nix OS 2311. But what that means is that people are losing interest in ARM v7L, and it'll probably be go the way of the next uh, the next platform we're talking about, which is ARM v6L. Uh, it's also it's it's what the Pi one was based on, and also it's it's the chipset or the chip or the CPU that the Pi Zero, not the not the Pi Zero two, but the Pi Zero uses 32-bit. It doesn't. Nix OS really doesn't support it at all anymore, at least not in the same way. You could probably rewind in time uh, to get an older Nix pack Nix packages version that would support it, but as of right now, modern uh, Nix OS does not support it. So, like I said, the, the test system I'm going to use is a Raspberry Pi Zero 2, 2W. It's got wireless in it. Um, but I suspect the image that I'm going to build should be compatible with, with you know, the Pi 3, 4, 5, uh, and the normal uh, Pi Zero 2. Am I saying that right? Sure. That's it. That being said, I haven't tried it on any of those devices, but, you know, sort of looking around indicates that doesn't don't seem to be any required configuration differences for basic functionality of those systems. You might uh, I've seen some mentions of needing to possibly mess around with a configuration flag named Linux packages dot you know our Linux RP3 or whatever it's I I'm, I put a placeholder that says other Linux version whatever in here that may be necessary to get you know some features of of each of each device but. Uh, I'm going to do a part two, and we'll, we'll we'll see if that's true or not. I have done this already. This is not going to be discovery. I have already managed to run a build and generate an AH64 ISO image for a Raspberry Pi. This took about two and a half hours on my system after I issued the command. I probably could have found some caches, third-party caches that I could use. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I did use Cachex to to cache the result of my build, so I won't need to, you know recompile if the if my Nix store gets blown away or this the packages the the risk packages in my Nix store get blown away i had also in, originally intended to get nixos working on an original pi zero but i punted like i said arm v6 is not really a thing in modern Nix os if i want to use uh, an original pi one or pi zero i'll just use raspberry os as for as long as i support it so uh here's what i've tested I've tested booting the system, uh, trying to update the system. I've tested the HMI works, I've tested the wireless works. Uh, in this video, what I'm not going to test is GPIO, USB, Ethernet, sound, Bluetooth, any other video mode than the console, any desktop UI. Um, also, <laughs> uh, the GPIO is blown out on the on this particular uh, 02W. So I couldn't test it even if I wanted to. And since it's a zero, it doesn't have sound or ethernet anyway. So uh, in the next video, I'll try to locate a more powerful Pi and test it for things like that. Um, this is, I don't know where to stick this little section here, but one of the uh, downsides of, of building an image this way is that usually you have a file called config.txt where you can put some, some they're kind of like kernel kernel flags. Uh, my ignorance is showing here. It, it may, it may, act, they may actually be kernel flags um, uh, that I guess tell the kernel, you know, what video mode to wind up in, and they're Raspberry Pi specific, you know, memory configuration and stuff like that. And it's usually called config.txt. And uh, this uh, image building uh, regime does not let you edit that conf the, the the stuff that's in that config that text after it's generated you have to regenerate the image again so just so you know so uh i'm going to build the image the repository that i'm using is one quote unquote of my own uh but this is actually just a trivial fork of, of a guy named pierre's uh pl Murthro. uh uh I forked his repository and it, it does all the heavy lifting. I, I just check, I just changed a couple flags in it that it, it, it sort of bit rotted slightly. Um, so it wasn't, wasn't working on my system. So, but in any case, if you go to there, you can see, you know, here's the instructions. Uh, but I'm going to go through it in real time here. 
despite the, repo the, the name of the repository, the next was Pi Zero Two, I think you should give it a shot. I have not tried it yet, but if you do have a Raspberry Pi, just give it a shot. See if it, see if it works on your three, four, and five. Uh, I think it. I think it might. I think it might. Uh, this particular repository is, uh, I think, meant to be used under Nix OS as the host system. Uh, there is another repository that makes mention of Pierre's repository uh, that claims to be friendlier to uh, to things to host systems that are not NixOS. Um, unfortunately, it looks like it is more complex. So I'm just using the one under NixOS because I have NixOS. The, the the only steps that really build you know get get something working or at least for me anyway uh, with my with my Pi Zero Two was to uh, edit edit this file in here, the 02w.nix, and uh, let's see, inside of here, there's not too much that needs to be changed. We need to change the network SSID to one of your own, and the, you know this is the SSID and this is the passphrase. And then we need to change, um, Users use Bob to whomever your user is and put in an authorized key file. So I've already done that in a branch. I'll pull that up. Projects. So let's get check out YTVID. And now that I've done that, you can see that I've changed Bob to Chris M and I've given him an authorized keys thing. We'll be using that for SSH. Uh, also I set the networking, yeah, I changed my networking. So, uh, with any luck, once we build that, we will have an image that will connect to our Wi-Fi and I can log into. So let's see here. So really that's the only thing that needs to be done to change stuff. Uh, we're going to issue this command in order to generate this image. CD'd into the NixOS Pi Zero Two directory that we cloned. Now, uh, in your environment, uh, this is this is the thing that's going to take about two and a half hours to do. Uh, in my environment, it's not going to take hardly any time at all uh, because I've already done all the compilation and generated an, Im an image, and it's done. So we can now burn the resulting image, which is inside of results SD image. Zero .2 image. Use uh, DD to do that. I am not going to do this because I already have one burned. And then we can jam it into our pie and start it up. Uh, I've already done that as well. When I did that. Um, this is what I saw. I'm not sure if it's my keyboard hardware, but I actually, you know, once it, once I, I, I get it, I get some console output on HDMI, um, but I actually have to type, uh, boot and hit enter the UB prompt to, to get the system to actually boot. I'm not sure if that's my fault or not. And then NixOS indeed boots, uh, some messages uh, come up in the console, some red angry messages indicating that Bluetooth isn't very happy. Um, have not investigated that yet. Yeah, not testing Bluetooth right now. Um, but I can indeed ping the system. I happen to know it's at this IP address. I'll make a liar on myself. <laughs> it's getting I rebooted my system <laughs> to make this video, and it's sitting there waiting for me to type boot. <laughs> okay, it's booting now. All right, so it should be just about up and going. And it is. You can see how we can switch to it. So wait. And there we go. Does Nick's always have an Etsy LSB release? The basic functionality of wireless and HMI and 
Let's see what we got for free memory. It's not running any desktop environment. It is only running uh, console. I'm not sure if you'd call it strange, but uh, the thing about the system built this way is that uh, there's no Etsy NixOS directory. Well, there is, but there's nothing in it. <laughs> and that's because we built the system from without. We did not use the system to build itself. So um, you say to yourself, well, how the hell do I make changes to the system? Well, you can try to use this uh, deploy-rs tool, uh, which is kind of a wrap around features that already exist in Nick, Nix itself. Um, at least that's what the docs recommend. Uh, and uh, we can make changes to this file that we defined our stuff in, and we can then run this uh, deploy thing after we um, build it again over here. And what it should do is it should uh, copy the changes that we've made to our host system over to our Pi. Um, but we can't, it does not work at the moment, at least, uh, at least when this host system like mine is x86, 64, because we get something like something like this, where it says building profile system for node and R with features is required to build it says, but I am a X64 machine. So uh, I suspect that if my host system was an ARM system, it would work fine, or at least an AH, AR, AARCH64 system. It would work fine. Uh, but it is not, and it does not. Uh, an alternate mechan mechanism to do this is reportedly to, to use uh, dash dash target host, dash dash target user, flags to NixOS rebuild when when the, when you have a configuration uh, but this reportedly only works if the host that you're you know the the, the host uh, the the uh, yeah the host system the build build host that you're using runs NixOS and of course I don't have any set of files yet for NixOS rebuild to run against because they're all over in over in this world over here so uh, I'd have to I have to you know pull them out and do that so in any case, what are my conclusions? Well, it works mostly. I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, you get from NixOS run on your Raspberry Pi. Um, I intend to do a follow-up video where I'll research the runtime issues I've come up with, uh, try to see if I can use DeployRS or NixOS Rebuild or whatever to push out changes. Um, I will try to get a different Raspberry Pi device to build, uh, to, to try to run this image on, like a, a Pi 3 or something, and see if the the image will work on both. And I'll see if I can use like an Ubuntu or Mac OS system to generate the images. So, but uh, yeah, that's how it's done. Uh, and I think, I think in general, like, I might not worry too much about not being able to update the system from without, um, because, in reality, uh, at least for some of my use cases, I just, um, it's not that much of a big deal for me to take the, you know, take a new SD card and flash it, you know, get get set up, flash flash the new SD card, pull it over to where, where the little machine is and, and swap it. Like I, I have this door unlock system that I run here. Currently it runs Ubuntu, uh, but it would be nice to get it to the point where it was totally declarative and running on a NixOS. I would like that a lot. So I would like to hear from anybody who has a better way to do this or or what. Uh, you know, NixOS docs are always a little tricky to navigate and particularly on alternate platforms. So, all right, well, thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate it.